There we go. Now I can control the volume a little better. How are y'all doing this evening? All right. First of all, I want to say what an honor it is to be here with you all tonight um, for the Black Fitness Resource Fair and Mixer. And special thanks to CPS Energy to Business for reaching out to me, um, along with the Alamo City Black Chamber of Commerce and Spurs Entertainment for hosting such an impactful event tonight. We're gathered to celebrate our achievements, acknowledge our challenges, and envision a future where black businesses thrive like never before. And to be honest, I'm here to talk some of us off the ledge <laughs> called entrepreneurship, <laughs> because y'all, it's hard. <laughs> um, before founding Leap My Heart, no one could have prepared me for entrepreneurship. You just gotta be in it, isn't that right? <laughs> Um, but it's such a beautiful thing and such an honor it is to serve people in the way that we do. But first, I want to take a moment to put some things into perspective for us tonight. Let us begin by examining the current state of Black-owned businesses in the U.S. As of 2024, there are approximately 3.7 million Black-owned businesses, y'all, in the United States. Yes, that is amazing. That's, yes, yes. These businesses represent about 11.3% of all businesses in the country, aligning closely with the 13 to 14% black per population percentage. But okay, let me pause here though and say that black women are mainly responsible for that growth over the last five to seven wow. years. Okay, black women, <laughs> amen. <laughs> However, only 2.7% of all U.S. employer firms, not solopreneurs, and I wanna be very careful um, that we begin to use the right language when we talk about businesses and understanding the importance of employer firms. Only 2.7% are black-owned businesses which are typically more profitable and face fewer challenges in acquiring credit compared to non-employer firms. And that's important for us to know. Like solopreneurship is where we begin, but it is not the goal for us to stay there. And black-owned businesses make significant contributions to the U.S. economy, generating upwards of $206 billion annually in revenue and supporting 3.56 million jobs. Mm. Yes, we are responsible for that. And yet, despite our contributions, black-owned businesses still face unique challenges, as we are very aware of, including limited access to funding and higher loan denial rates compared to our white-owned business counterparts. But turning our focus to San Antonio, the black business community here reflects both the challenges but and the resilience too seen on a national scale. Black-owned businesses make up only 1.4% approximately of employer firms in San Antonio in the New Braunfels metro area, which is significantly lower than our population proportion, which is about 7 to 14%, depending on who you ask. Right? <laughs> And I'm sure you've been in rooms where that has been debated. But I want us to take a look at what it will take to level the playing field. And this is where we have a lot of work to do. To achieve parity in the United States, an estimated 682,000 additional black-owned employer businesses would be needed. Let me say that again an estimated 682,000 additional black-owned employer businesses would be needed to generate approximately 776 billion more in revenue and create approximately 5.9 million more jobs. However, based on current growth rates, it would take more than three centuries. So for those of us who've had a long day, that's 300 years, <laughs> okay? For black Americans to achieve racial parity with our white counterparts in business ownership. Who got time for that? <laughs> Nobody. 
Our communities don't have time. Our children don't have time. Our country doesn't have time. Our well-being doesn't have time. Our safety doesn't have time. Our churches and other nonprofits that we support certainly don't have time as they provide much needed services to our people. Y'all, we don't have that time. Now, I want us to be clear. I said employer businesses, not just businesses. So how many of us are solopreneurs? Yep, myself included. We need to change that. Again, like I said earlier, that's of course where we start. That's where a lot of the hard work is done, but the goal is never to stay there. We need to bring others to the table so that they can eat too. So I'm challenging solopreneurs, including myself, to get in position. If you don't play well with others, grow. <laughs> if you don't know how to hire, learn. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Why? Because first I want us to understand that black Americans continue to lead in unemployment rates compared to other racial groups. Last March, the unemployment rate for black Americans was 5% compared to the national rate of 3.5%. Black-owned businesses are vital in addressing this issue by providing jobs and economic opportunities within the community. By supporting and expanding black-owned businesses, we can create more employment opportunities and reduce the unemployment rate among black Americans. And rather than complaining, as we sometimes do, that those businesses will not hire our people. We must hire our people. We must become the businesses that hire and in turn positively impact our communities. It's our responsibility. We cannot wait for the next elected president. We cannot wait for the next bill to be passed or the next law to be passed. Well, we have so much power within our own hands to make a difference. This disparity also highlights the critical need for targeted support and resources to bridge the gap. What resources? You ask a great question. The three C's, capital, connections, and contracts. Say that with me. Capital, connections, and contracts. Right. And you need all three to work at the same time. We really do. It's like a triangle interdependent on one another. It takes who you know to get the contract. But it's hard to be in position for the contract if you don't have the capital, right? And it's a, a never-ending cycle. This stark disparity highlights the ongoing challenges we face to those big three things that we need. Again, capital, connections, and contracts. contracts. They can change the game for us or rather keep us in the game. And a lot of us in here tonight, if we were honest, we're, we're barely hanging into the game. We're barely staying there. And so we have to look at each other to say, what can we do? Is there more that we can do? Because the capital is in the room. The connections you need are in the room. The contracts are in the room. Mm -hmm. And so we need all three of y'all. And that's why all three are so challenging on any given day. That is why your money gets really funny and your change stays strange. <laughs> that's why your business relationships and your reputation are constantly under attack and being questioned. And that's why the certification and registration processes can sometimes seem diametrically opposed to you. Your computer won't act right, you can't find the forms that you need, you submit everything, you don't hear back. Sometimes it's just the process, right, that seems to be against you. But between system racism, discriminatory practices, our innate human biases, demonic warfare opposed to you fulfilling your God-given mission, y'all, this thing is hard. But let me remind you, that if it were easy, everyone would do it. And if everyone did it, what true value would it have? Mm -hmm. So do not give up. 
Many businesses do not survive those crucial first five years. Okay, so again, I tell you, do not give up. You have too many lives to touch, families to feed, and too many communities to impact. So now that we understand capital connections and contracts are the keys to our sustainability and growth, who is the one that has what it takes to acquire all three, but is willing to not only steward them, but become a porter, meaning a doorway for capital connections and contracts? I'm so glad you asked. You asked good questions. <laughs> right now, I want you to take out your phone, as if it's not already out. I want you to open your camera. And I want you to put it in selfie mode, as if it's not already in selfie mode, right? <laughs> and tell that person looking at you, in your phone, you're the one. And you look good tonight. Because <laughs> it's true. You're the one. You're the one who has what it takes. It's you, it's me, it's us. It is absolutely necessary for us black entrepreneurs to become stewards and porters, y'all. Stewards and porters of capital connections and contracts. Let's get educated. Let's stop being scared. Let's stop looking to someone else to have the change of heart or to step up and do what's right and to do what it takes. Let's decide that it will be us. And if we are already in position, then I want you to ask yourself this question. Are you doing enough? Tonight I came to tell each of you that you are the one. You're the one who can move black business, black wealth, black wellness, and black communities forward. Not the person next to you, or the one behind you, or the person who even helped you but you. Number one, you are the one who can mentor other entrepreneurs. And I know some of us in here might be like, mentor, I'm struggling myself. Teach others what you've learned in your struggle. Mentorship is not just for the great things that you've learned and your successes, but sharing the things that didn't work as well. I also want you to know number two, that you are the one who can partner with other entrepreneurs. Because y'all, collaboration is key to amplifying your impact. By partnering with fellow entrepreneurs, you can combine your strengths, share your resources, and create opportunities that otherwise would seem impossible alone. Number three, I want you to know that you are the one who can support other entrepreneurs. Support comes in various forms. Not only financial assistance, even though I know that's the top one <laughs> we want, but simply giving advice or referrals or simply showing up for one another. I have so many friends who are way beyond successful than I am at this moment who say, I will come and work your table. I will come and I'll do your pictures. I just want to be there and support you. And y'all, that means so much. Because pictures cost money. <laughs> <laughs> so it just costs money, okay? Most people want to be paid to work your table. So that's not a little thing, but that's how we can support each other on this journey. Number four, you are the one who can inspire future entrepreneurs. Your success, yes, that's right, your success, because you haven't given up yet, right? It's a story that can ignite the spark of ambition for the next generation. I encourage everyone, if you haven't already, to start an internship program, to start some way of connecting with college students and high school students with the work that you do, and inspire them to become entrepreneurs as well. And if you don't know how to do that, I'm more than happy to help you, as I've had an internship program from the inception of my business. Number five, you are the one who can make a difference. The path to progress is really easy, but it's always worth it. 
You have the power to affect change, to push boundaries, and to create a legacy of prosperity and wellness for your community. So know that you have the power to do it. Remain purpose-centered and don't get off track. Number six, you are the one who decides how much you will grow and how far you will go. No one else gets to decide that for you. You don't have to give up today. The fact that you're here tells me that you haven't. And so stay in the fight. And growth is not just about increasing revenue, but also about developing your skills, expanding your network, continually improving your business practices, and changing your mindset. With some time, it's the hardest thing for us to do, but it's necessary for us to grow. Number seven, you are the one with the skills to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Your expertise and capabilities are valuable assets, y'all. You can drive your business forward with them. And I want you to know that by leveraging your skills, you can not only create value and generate income, but ensure financial health of your business. Bring your whole self to the table. Anytime I coach leaders, I want to know what are your interests? What are your hobbies? What are the talents that you're not tapping into in your business? And how can that add value to what you do, add value to your clients and your customers? Tap into that. There's so much that you're leaving off the table if you would just think about how can I monetize and provide better services with the gifts and talents you already have. So again, bring your whole self to the table, your talents, your weirdness, your quirks, your passions. Everything about me serves my clients. From my style, because I have a fashion degree, yes I do. <laughs> and I do help clients with that. If they need that, I do that. Is that a part of executive coaching? No, but it can be, as a dimension of wellness in their aesthetics, right? And the person that they want to become and how they want to present themselves. I love to sing, I love music. So I do prayer times and we listen to music. That's the way that I serve my clients in a way that I also use my interests. And so I just wanna give you that for free, if you will, is what things are you not tapping into that can serve your clients better? And then also I want you to know, number eight, that you are the one someone is praying for. Your success, your leadership, and your willingness to give back can be the answer to someone's prayer. All your experiences, the things that you are aware of, your heart, your passions, that's what someone is looking to connect with. But if you're afraid to market that, if you're afraid to share that with the people and your customers in your community, how will they know that you're the one that they've been looking for? So you can become the beacon of hope and inspiration that someone has been seeking. And I encourage you all to be that. So in closing, I want to share a proverb with you. Proverbs 11 and 25 says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed also. My prayer is that we would all take on this mindset this evening, a mindset of generosity, acts of wild benevolence in knowledge, opportunity, and grace, and understanding that we are not competing, we are completing. I have my lane and you have yours. Even if we work in the same industry, I have my niche, my methods, my specialties, and you have yours too. There really is enough food for everyone to eat. It's the greedy who causes others to starve. It's up to us to pray for wisdom to live and lead with integrity and selflessness and to have the courage to hold ourselves accountable to the mission and our convictions. I pray that this evening is a refreshing for us all, especially to the entrepreneur who is on the verge of giving up or to the startup founder who is wondering if they're making a mistake. Capital connections and contracts are here. Love, grace, and support are here. More importantly, you are here. 
and that suggests that you aren't ready to give up just yet. So as we look to the future and prepare to establish connections at tonight's Mixer, let's leave this moment with a renewed commitment to refresh others and to lift each other up tonight. Let's commit to being the ones who will be both stewards, but also get in position to be the porters of capital connections and contracts. Let's commit to living and leading with our full potential. Let's challenge the status quo, break down barriers, and build bridges to new opportunities. Let's mentor, partner, support, inspire, and do what is necessary to transform the landscape for black businesses and ensure a future where all black wealth and wellness are not just aspirations, but a reality. Remember that you are not alone, even though entrepreneurship can feel very lonely at times. We are a powerful community together, rich in talent, creativity, and determination. Together, we can and will achieve extraordinary things. You're the one who can make a difference, and together we're the ones who will shape the future. So after this portion of the evening um, has come to a close, which I'm done, I'm the only thing standing between you and you starting making those connections, I invite you all to come to my table, leave my heart right here on the front, on the front end here, um, and connect with me. And let's discuss how I can support you in your entrepreneurial journey, and let's make black history together. Thank you.